Algebra 1, welcome to Chapter 3, Lesson 4. In this lesson, we're going to talk about slope-intercept form. We've kind of been looking at slope-intercept form a little bit when we're talking about how to graph um, finding zeros. We kind of looked at it, and we kind of looked at it in the very first lesson um, to graph a little bit in Class 2. So slope-intercept form, our objective is in this lesson to be able to write and graph linear equations, so equations that make a straight line, um, in slope-intercept form. Our standard are these two standards here. Make sure you copy those down. Let's go ahead and start today. All right, slope-intercept form. We have a few things that we need to know. Slope-intercept form is an equation of a line in algebra. And if we have something in slope-intercept form, it's always going to make a straight line. Now, in slope-intercept form, the equation is y equals mx plus b. The m stands for your slope. And slope tells you your rise over run. That's what we learned in the previous lesson. Now, the B is very, 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 very important in slope-intercept form because the, v, or the B tells your graph where it's going to be starting. It's the start of the graph. Now, you're always going to start your graph here at the B. That's because it's the y-intercept. That's the point that our graph hits the y-line. So we need to know that the y-intercept is our starting point. And it's our point where our graph is going to start. We have to start by graphing the y-intercept, and then we're going to use the slope to plot additional points. So here are three things that you want to know with slope-intercept form. With slope-intercept form, you want to get the y by itself, and you want to move everything else to the other side. Sometimes to move numbers, you add or subtract, and if it's next to the y, you multiply or divide. After you get the y by itself, and you get it in y equals mx plus b, you have two other pieces that you need to be able to do. The first thing you need to be able to do is identify the y-intercept, that guy there. It's the number that's by itself. So you're going to see a number that's all by itself. That's the y-intercept. And if nothing's there, represent nothing with zero. Next thing we do is identify the slope. It's the number next to x. So we look for a number next to x. And the number that's right next to x is going to tell us our rise over run. Now, sometimes it's possible there's going to be nothing there. And if there's nothing there, you're going to put zero x's there. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to write equations in slope-intercept form, and we're going to graph equations in slope-intercept form, and that's our lesson for today. So make sure you get some examples down, make sure you make some graphs, and we're done for today. In our first example, we're going to write an equation in slope-intercept form for the information given and we're going to graph it. So make sure that you make a graph and make sure you write down all the information. On our next example, we're just going to change the slope in the y-intercept and do it again. So you need this information, you need to make a graph. Now when you make a graph, it's very, very important that you draw a line straight up and down, draw a line straight left and right, label the left and right axis your x, label the up and down your y. And when you make your graph, you want to try to make your marks equal distance apart. So try to make them so they're always about equal distance apart. Try to eyeball it the best you can. If you have to, use a ruler. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this information as y equals mx plus b because it says write it in slope-intercept form. So we need to know y equals mx plus b. You need to know what m is and you need to know what b is. Those are the only two things that you're going to replace them when writing the equation in slope-intercept form, given the slope and the intercept. So we need to know what m is. Well, m is my slope, so I see slope is 1 4. b is also the y-intercept. So if you had to write your equation in y equals mx plus b, it would be y equals my m, which is slope, is 1 4 x. And then plus b, you can write this one of two ways. You could write plus negative 1, or you could write it as y equals 1 fourth x minus 1. I prefer that if you're going to write it, you write it in option number 2, so it's a little bit easier to graph in your... Good, but if you write it that way, that's okay. So my answer usually looks like this. y equals 1 fourth x minus 1. I got 1 fourth because that's the slope and slope is m. I got negative 1 because that's my b and that's the y-intercept. So what I need to do now is I need to graph this. Now you need to think back to the previous slide. 
the B is where your graph starts. So your graph starts here. It's also called your y-intercept. So you need to look at the y-line, and we're going to put a dot right where our graph starts. Our graph is going to start at negative 1 on the y-line. So here's the y-line, here's negative 1. We're going to put a point right there. That's where we're starting our graph. Now, from our starting point, we use the slope to make additional points. Our slope is 1 fourth. What that 1 fourth tells me is the top number tells me how much to rise, and the bottom number tells me how much to run, which is what we found out in slope. So from this point, we're going to rise one space, and we're going to run four spaces. And since that's a positive four, we're going to go to the right by four. So from this point here that we started at, we go up one, because that's a rise, and we run one, two, three, four, put a point. Now, I don't have room to go up one and over four again, so what we can do is we can do the opposites from our starting point, and instead of going up one and right four, we can actually go down one and back four, and it'll still be the same. Down one, back four, and put your dot. If you connect your three dots, they will definitely fall in a straight line. And we just graphed our slope-intercept form. So to graph slope-intercept form, very quick, start at your y-intercept, use your slope for your rise and run to plot additional points. The reason why I said that we can go down one and back four is because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So a negative divided by negative will still be a positive one-fourth. So if I went up one, and right four from this dot, I'll be back on that graph. And that's how we do this. In example two, we're going to do another one, kind of like the previous one. We're going to write an equation in slope-intercept form for the information given. We're also going to graph it. So we're going to use that information and write it to make it look like that. Then we're going to put it on the graph. So let's go ahead and get started. If you feel like you can do it on your own, by all means, go ahead, knock it out. Show me that you can do this. So pause the video, do it, and then we're going to go ahead and do it ourselves too. So we have y equals m is slope. So whatever slope is, we're going to put right here. Well, our slope is 4, so we're going to say y equals 4x. And b is the y-intercept, so y equals 4x plus 3. This is our equation in slope-intercept form. Once we have our equation in slope-intercept form, we should be able to graph it. We need to be able to read the two pieces of information, the slope and the y-intercept. That's why it's called slope-intercept form. If we can identify those, we can graph it. We start at the y-intercept. So look at the y-line, and we're going to start at 3. So here's the y-line, and here is 3. Now looking at the y-line, I started at 3, I put my point, that's good. Now my slope is 4. Now, what we should do with 4 is we should make it have a rise and a run. So, we're going to put 4 over 1. Now, if I'm looking at this, I really can't go up 4 and over 1. So, maybe I want to change 4 over 1, but still keep it the same value, positive 4. So, what I know is this is a positive and that's a positive. Well, I can make them both negatives then, because two negatives equals a positive. A negative 4 divided by negative 1, it's still positive 4. And that's good to know, because if I can't go up 4 and over 1, what I can do is I can do the opposite. Start at this point, go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and instead of going right 1, since that's a negative, we'll go back 1 to negative 1. From the dot we just made right there, we can do it again. We can go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and back 1, put a dot. If we connect our three dots, they will fall on a straight line. And we just graphed our equation. y equals mx plus b. y equals 4x plus 3 would look something like this. Alright, so we're going to move on to our next part. In our next part, we're going to have something graphed, and we're going to be able to write it in slope-intercept form. If you're given a graph, and you're told that you have to write it in slope-intercept form, what you want to do is do part two and three. We want to first identify the y-intercept, and then second, identify the slope. 
So in order to actually be able to do that, the first thing you want to do is you want to place two points on the graph. So you want to place two points that you can actually tell kind of the coordinates on the graph. For me, I like to always go for the y-intercept because I got to do it in y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to place a point right here at the y-intercept. My next point, I'm going to try to figure out where I can figure out where a point would go, and I'm going to say right here. So I usually look at my intercepts first to see if I can plot some points. And if I can, that's good. If I can't, I look elsewhere to see where I can plot two points. So I've got two points on my graph. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the B, or my y-intercept, is equal to 1, 2, 3. So my y-intercept is 3 in this equation. The next thing I want to do is I want to identify the slope, my m. So what I'm going to do is say, how do I go from this point to this point? And I'm going to use what we learned and slope and use rise over run. So from this point, I go 1, 2, 3 down. So that's a negative 3. And I go 1, 2 over. So in this case, it's a negative 3 over 2. Since I've identified my y-intercept and my slope, now I can write the equation in slope-intercept form. My equation is y equals m, so negative 3 over 2, x plus 3. And I have written the equation in slope-intercept form for the information that's given on the graph. That's how we do these problems. In my next example, we're going to do kind of the same thing. We're going to write an equation in slope-intercept form for the given graph. So, first thing, plot two points. If you can plot the y-intercept, that's always a good point to plot. And if you can plot the x-intercept, that's always a good point to plot. So, at least try to put two points on the graph. Sometimes you can make the intercepts, sometimes you can't. So, we plotted the intercepts. The first thing is, we say what the y-intercept is. Well, the y-intercept in this equation is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my y-intercept is 5. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to find out the slope, which is my rise and run. So from point 1 to point 2, we're going to figure out the rise and run. So I'm looking at it, and I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down. So that's a negative 5. And then I go back 1. That's a negative 1. So that's a negative and a negative. So my slope is a negative 5 divided by negative 1. Well, negative 5 divided by negative 1 equals a positive 5. So my slope is 5, and my y-intercept is 5. So if I had to write my equation in y equals mx plus b, or slope-intercept form, my equation would be y equals 5x plus 5. And that's my answer to this problem. We plotted two points. We identified the y-intercept. We identified the slope and we wrote our equation in slope-intercept form. We're going to graph a few more problems in slope-intercept form, and that's it for today. In our next example, we're told to graph 3x plus 2y equals 6. That's in standard form. We could graph it by using intercepts, but in this case, we're going to graph it in y equals mx plus b by following rule 1. We need to get the letter y by itself. So we're going to use what we've learned in literal equations, and we're going to get y by itself. So we look at the y after drawing a line through the equal sign, and we say, what do we need to get rid of? Well, we need to get rid of 3x's, and we need to get rid of 2. We need to get rid of 3x's first, though. So we're going to subtract 3x's. And if we subtract 3x's from one side, we're going to subtract 3x's from the other side. 3x's minus 3x's is no x's. We now have 2y's equals... 6 minus 3x's. Now we've almost got it in slope-intercept form because we've almost got the variable y by itself. So next thing we need to do is get the number 2 away. So the 2 is multiplying by y, so we're going to divide by 2. In mathematics, if you divide one number by 2, you have to divide every number by 2. So we're going to divide 6 by 2, and this 3 is going to be dividing by 2. Since the 3 is next to the x, we actually want to leave that as a fraction. That's actually a good thing in this case. Fractions help us graph because it tells us our rise and our run. So 2 divided by 2 equals 1. So we have 1 letter y equals 6 divided by 2 is 3. 
And we're going to leave this fraction with x actually a fraction. And we just wrote it in slope-intercept form. The m is always the number that's next to the x. So in this case, our slope is a negative 3 over 2. The b is the number by itself. So this might not look like y equals mx plus b, but it is y equals mx plus b. So we're going to go ahead and graph this. So we draw a line down. We draw a line across. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Label the y, label the x. So if we were graphing this, we need to start by plotting our b. So in this case, our b is at 3. 1, 2, 3. And from this point, we're going to go down 3, right 2. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. From this point, I could do it again. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Connect my dots, and it makes a line. We just graphed the linear equation. y equals 3 minus 3x, or 3 over 2x, which is also that number in standard form. We just graphed our equation. That quick and that easy. First thing we did was we got y by itself. Once we had y by itself, it's in y equals mx plus b. We identified our m, we identified our b, and we graphed it. That's it for today's lesson. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Make sure you like this video, make sure you got your notes, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a good day.